Hey everybody, welcome back to Painting Big. This is Anne and today we're going to take a little bit of break. I'm going to paint a turtle person and I'm going to talk to you about how I got into mini painting because a lot of you have asked on stream. I get this question a lot. So I thought I would do a brief bit for my fundamental series on how I got in and let's get to it. All right, we're at turtle. This is uh, the wild, wild something from... Uh... <laughs> from our new Bard's Song board game that just arrived this weekend. We're terribly excited, David and I. Um, and I'm gonna be playing with some colors. Uh, I did what is called a Zenith Prime on this, and this is something we'll be talking about in the fundamental series, where you do a black prime, followed by a white or light gray prime from above. And then when you put like a heavy wash over it, you retain your shadows and highlights. So it kind of gives you a guide for your highlights and shadows. I like to use it for faster painting. So we're gonna be using that. The uh, base color that I applied in a wash over the top was uh, the beautiful Bones Elven Green 9488. And then I'm going to be mixing parts of tropical blue into this and using a little bit of dungeon slime because who doesn't love dungeon slime? Like seriously. And uh, yeah, maybe some whites, palomino gold, you know, whatever. While we chat, while we chat. We're just doing something while we chat. So let's talk about it because like I'm not, you know, I'm not a youngster and uh, obviously I uh, have been in the hobby actually for a very long time. And I, when I started going to Gen Con, for example, I would say there were 50 guys to every one woman. And now it's very different, right? <laughs> so let's just say, first off, let's just say the gaming and miniatures world has changed a lot since I got in. And I got in uh, when I was a kid, when I was, D&D um, &D was just coming out, like the the advanced Dungeons and Dragons hardcovers were uh, in, in Target. I saw them when we were shopping for other stuff and begged my parents, you know, to let me use my allowance money. And they got me the... Uh, D&D Redbox Bake Basics set when I was nine, and that began a lifelong love of Dungeons & Dragons, which continues to this day, though we don't have a gaming group right now. So it was inevitable because I was an artsy kid. I've been drawing since I was four or five years old just because I loved animals and I wanted, like, I just, you know, like a lot of kids, a lot of kids are artsy. Um... And so I got into drawing animals and I loved fairy tales and mythology. So when this D&D thing came along, I was like all into the art, all into the legends and myths. And, and it was a natural thing for me to pick up. Um, I will say the great irony is, is that I was mostly in oil paint as a kid, uh, which is now coming full circle after decades of working with acrylics and getting very good with acrylics, right? Is the great irony that I'm once again picking up oil paint to play with miniatures. So, all right, so there I am, little kid Anne in the 80s. Yeah, a long time ago with her uh, her little D&D box of figures. I was terrible at it. Terrible, terrible. Like, I seriously wish I had the first mini I ever tried to paint when I was a kid because I knew nothing about shading and highlighting. I knew nothing about, um, you know, just, just anything. I, I didn't understand, like, anything other than, like, line art. I was mostly drawing and just, like, putting colors on stuff, you know, as far as an artist goes. I really didn't have a clue. And I carried that not having a clue over to miniatures. So, um, so yeah, so I, I base coated them. I got frustrated because they didn't have the depth that I wanted them to have, but I didn't understand how to create shadows. And so I kind of gave up on it. Um, I kept in D&D, but I gave up on miniatures until I got to college and I got my gaming group, my first college gaming group. And uh, then I started painting like stuff for my boyfriend and my, my miniatures. We played uh, GURPS, we played Shadowrun. I love Shadowrun. Um, we played D&D &D, and we played Battletech. And so I play, I uh, painted a lot of those models. And at that time I was still base coating, but I had, I was getting a better understanding kind of of what I needed to do. Um, I was going to art school. I went to school for art in college. So, you know, I was kind of beginning to think that maybe there was, uh, something I could do with this hobby that was actually more artistic. And so, I had gotten to the point where I was uh, like priming black and leaving black lines in between everything, like essentially reverse lining, right? Leaving black in all my shadows. So I was reverse lining uh, to, and that made me happier because that made the details stand out. And then later on, I learned about actually just lining. 
when I switched to white primer and just adding the lines, you know, while I was painting. And I liked that a little better. I didn't have to fight against the black primer. But, uh, so I, I, uh, I had a gaming group. I had a blast. Um, it was, it was super fun. And I have, again, a love of gaming that I've carried over to this day. From that time, I worked at my local game store and that was when things really started to change. Um, because I got into Warhammer. Because the guys who ran, you know, the guys and, and a gal, we had a, we had another female employee as well. Um, but the guys were mostly into Warhammer. And so when they saw that I could paint, they were like, you've got to play Warhammer with us. And uh, the wood elves were just coming out and I always liked elves. So I was like, all right, fine. And that started, that really got me uh, kind of stuck into the miniatures side of things, like really uh, appreciating it because along with the games workshop, of course, came some pictures of really beautifully painted miniatures from their heavy metal team and from people who were just painting them to a much higher standard. And being in college in Madison, Wisconsin, um, which was very, very gamey, I would say, very, very gamer friendly um, city. It really was easy to to just find people and pick up on all of this and, and to see other examples of what people were doing and, and yeah, all that stuff. Um, so I got seriously into Warhammer and that was where I started learning washes. I started learning lining. I learned, I learned to layer before I learned to dry brush, um, because I didn't like the texture that dry brushing left. And so I, I learned to dry brush long after I learned other forms of highlighting is the great, the great, uh, silly kind of funny thing. While I worked at the game store, we had a consignment program. I started kind of doing, I started by doing commissions for friends where, you know, they, they weren't very good painters. I actually did eyeballs at a dollar an eyeball once <laughs> because I could paint them and other people in my gaming group couldn't. Um, so I started doing commissions for friends and, and I started putting miniatures on consignment at the game store just for sale. Like if I wanted to paint something um, just because it was a fun model, I would put it on consignment and get, you know, some money for it, which was, you know, made me happy, made them happy. So that was kind of the beginning. And then while I was in the midst of all that, <laughs> I sold all my magic cards. I decided I was going whole hog. I sold all my magic cards and uh, bought into miniatures uh, pretty much full, like full on at that point. And background then was when eBay was really starting up as a miniatures market. And so... I started looking at that because people were telling me, oh, you're selling your miniatures at the game store, but you could, you might be able to make a lot of money if you sold on eBay. And uh, so I started looking into that. And that was where I discovered Jennifer Haley, who I did, those of you who have seen uh, the Dark Sword Miniatures DVD where I teach with Jen. That's where um, I came across Jen for the first time. And she was painting for Cool Mini or Not in that day. And, um, and so I was like thrilled to see another female miniature painter and thrilled to see one who was so very good because Jen was pretty, one of the best in the world um, at that point. And uh, so I reached out to her via email and stopped by to see her when I was driving back to Wisconsin for, to visit my family. And that began a friendship that continues to this day. Now I mentioned driving back to Wisconsin and that was because I had, uh, I was kind of at loose ends after college and just in general, I was working for Equifax. So I was in a corporate world. I wasn't enjoying it greatly, but I was still selling miniatures. I was having actually quite a bit of success relatively selling them on eBay. And so I decided, um, foolheartedly, but entirely in keeping with my, my, uh, that age self that uh, I wanted to quit and become a full-time artist. I decided I wanted to try freelance mini painting. I thought I could do it. I thought there was a market on eBay that would sustain it. Um, and I was honestly just sick of the corporate world. And so I did. I, uh, I quit my job at Equifax and I moved to Baltimore, um, the Baltimore area. And I started working part-time for Games Workshop to kind of get the employee discount because the employee discount in those days was very good. 
Um, and yeah, so during that time, I was also scoping out the things that I've been watching in the you know thing I've been noticing in the White Dwarf magazine for so long, right? The Golden Demon painting competition. And so when I first moved there, it was right before games day, I got to see the models in person for the first time to really see, you know, the level that they, that Golden Demon was at. And that was uh, 2001. That was an amazing year at Golden Demon in Baltimore. Uh, people who I, who later became my friends, I met that year. Great painters. And I decided I can do this. I can, I can hit that level. If I work really hard, I can hit that level. I can win this, you know, I can win one of these. Um, and that was really when my competitive side, like the side of me that really enjoys painting competitions in general, like that was when that side of me just woke up and went, Hey, Hey, we can do that. Um, I will say, uh, during, after that time, not, you know, I tried, I tried hard. I learned a lot about myself, but I did fail utterly at freelancing that first go freelance painting, freelance art is definitely not for everyone. There were parts that I absolutely loved about it and parts that I really just were just soul crushingly stressful. And, uh, and I, I didn't have the work ethic I needed. I didn't have the motivational tools I needed. I didn't have the structure I needed. There were a lot of things I needed that I didn't have at that age. And so I, I threw in the towel and I moved back to Wisconsin and I tried to figure out, I worked for GW out there while I figured out what was I going to do? with, uh, with my life here, you know, what am I, what, what's my next move essentially? Um, and I really was at kind of odd ends just working for GW retail in Chicagoland. And, uh, then my friend Jennifer Haley, again, uh, got invited by a company named Reaper Miniatures to come down for their first ever artist, uh, artist gathering. So they invited, Reaper had just put out its pro paint line. It was inviting a lot of painters down to uh, use the line, try the line, try the brushes, try everything, you know, give them feedback. They thought this was going to be cool. And meanwhile, all the painters could also learn from each other and, you know, be fun. Fun and cool. And Reaper gets some good feedback and maybe some painted miniatures. And so uh, Jennifer got asked by Ron Hawkins, who's still the Reaper art director at this, uh, this telling that, uh, she's like, he was like, well, do you know anybody else who might be a good person to invite? And she was like, Anne, invite Anne. So I got a last minute invite to the Reaper artist conference and I emerged from that weekend with a job. <laughs> uh, at the end of the weekend, Ron and Ed pulled me aside and they wanted to know what it would take for me to move down to Texas to, to be the new staff painter for Reaper Miniatures. Um, they had been impressed. Uh, it wasn't even my painting ability that got me the job. This is the amusing thing. It was actually my personality, uh, my teaching, you know, what the thing you guys see here on YouTube and Twitch and, you know, stuff like that in my Patreon, uh, just this enthusiasm for the hobby and, and just the willingness to teach and, and really the enjoyment of teaching, right? Really wanting to help out, help people get the hobby, help you guys get it and not have a bunch of frustration and all that. So Reaper hired me and I was their first full-time on staff, staff painter. I moved to Texas where I remained for the following 17 years. Um, one of the things on my original to-do list for Reaper was to create a new paint line for them. And so uh, that became Master Series Paint. Uh, I did about six months of R&D with our local uh, paint supplier, paint company, to try to figure out, you know, what did I, what do we want here? Um, I had used a lot of different paint lines available in the day. And so I had a, an idea of what I wanted the paint line to be. And uh, that, was, that was a whole new experience for me. I learned just enough paint chemistry to be dangerous is the way I like to put it. Um, and I also drew a lot on my art background, obviously, um, for just uh, color relationships and what kind of uh, variety of colors do we want and all of that. So that was where really I still think Master Series is the best thing I've ever done for the hobby. Um, I'm very proud of it. It's the thing I am most proud of that I did at Reaper. Um, maybe one of the things I'm proudest of that I've done in my life to this point, I would say. Just because people continually tell me how much they enjoy the paint and that they think is like it's super easy for them to use and they really enjoy the line and the qualities in it. 
So, so during all that time, that was a very exciting time at Reaper. Reaper was really growing during that time. And uh, a lot of us wore a lot of different hats. And so I was staff painting and I was designing the paint line. And in the meantime, Ed and Brian and I all created ReaperCon and the first ReaperCon was born and, you know, an intrinsic part in that. And so it was just a really cool time to be at Reaper. Um, when everything was starting out, when you really got to contribute and um, and help out, you know, help form what became, you know, it's a, we do ReaperCon still every year. It's like our big flagship convention. It's gotten so large um, in the intervening years. It's crazy. But yeah, so being there when that started was really cool and having a hand in shaping ReaperCon into the it's a very craft heavy con. It's a very uh, sculpting and painting centric con. And we were the first people to do that. And I think part of the reason it was so craft centric is because I was so heavily involved. Uh, the classes were the point. The artists were the point. The learning was the point. And there was gaming, but gaming was always second. Unlike other cons where gaming was the point and miniature painting was second or third or 15th. <laughs> so I, spended, uh, I started spending a lot more time um, making paint and a lot less time mix, uh, and a lot less time painting, uh, if it was inevitable, um, because the paint line started to really take off. And over the years, um, that, that transition shifted, you know, just naturally until I was mostly making paint every day, but I was starting to have back issues. And, uh, at the same time, my marriage was kind of tanking my first marriage, <clears throat> and so uh, things were shifting around in my life. And I loved Reaper, but at the same time, like when once the divorce happened and my whole life was upended and I had a lot of things that I thought were real were, you know, not anymore. And, um, you know, anybody, any of you who've had a big life change understand, I'm sure, your priority, like you, you look at your life and you're just like, well, where am I now, Right. And I love Reaper. Reaper, I cannot say enough good things about Reaper and the Reaper family and all of the people that I've worked with over the years. Reaper is a fantastic company to work for. If it wasn't, I still wouldn't be, wouldn't still be working for it. <laughs> so Ed saw kind of the writing on the wall. He knew that I was looking to transition, but I was still working there and I was still doing, doing the things um, until I uh, met... Uh, started talking more to David, my current fiance, um, who is also a miniature painter who I had originally met at ReaperCon, who was just, you know, another one of the many painters I knew up until, up until the point after the divorce where we started chatting a lot more. But uh, long story short, at that point, I ended up moving to here, California, uh, to the town I was born in, in fact. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, Reaper, I told you, they're an awesome company and they kept me on. They uh, they pretty much were like, hey, you know, we'd like you to still stream for us. Like, So they kept me on as a part-time employee, even though I'd, I'd moved and uh, helped. it's helped me, you know, transition. Um, I, I missed saying that during all that time when the divorce was, was starting to happen is when I actually started my Patreon. And that, I think, was really the game changer. I had wanted, for many years, ever since I first failed at freelancing, I had always thought I would like to give it another go. I would like to give this another shot now that I understand the level of commitment and work that it's going to take. And so this was that opportunity. And Reaper also keeping me on and letting me you know, stay on as a part-timer was was an, a huge bonus to that as well. So it enabled me, so it enabled me to essentially do this thing that I'm doing right now. I moved during the beginning of the pandemic, April, 2020. Um, and uh, I've been out here working and uh, streaming and Patreoning ever since. Um, that is uh, it's kind of in a nutshell, like how I got started. Um, things like things I, I think are awesome about today's mini painting world would be all the resources that you guys have today. 
Like, I had to teach myself how to do a lot of stuff because there just weren't, like, there wasn't any way to learn. If you didn't have somebody near you, you know, when I was first trying it, um, or if you were the best painter in your area, as I was for, for some time, um, you know, you just had to learn by trying to trying things and seeing what, you know, what, what sang, swam and what sank, right? Um, and so I think the best thing about today's hobby world is that you guys have so many resources. You can get on the YouTubes, you can get on the Twitch, you can go to your local store, you know, you can, you can find people and watch their stuff and, you know, join Patreons and do all this cool stuff. But that's, that's a game changer. Like I didn't have any of that. And I, I'm like totally jealous of all of you who like have this wonderful road laid out for you by incredible instructors who can teach, uh, I also am thankful that there are so many more women in the hobby these days and that it's very inclusive toward women in general here in the States, at least, um, and North America, I would say. And I'm glad that so many um, of my fellow women, like, I'm glad that when I go to a gaming convention, it's no longer like a 50 to 1 ratio. Um, so all this stuff, all this stuff is great. And... I don't know that there's anything I'd change about the hobby. Like, I love how inclusive we are. I hope we keep that. You know, it's like, when I was a kid, geeks and nerds were definitely the lower class, and now we rule. <laughs> now everybody's everybody's a computer gamer, right? Um, but I just hope we keep going in this uh, this direction, this this inclusive, like, cool direction where we welcome people and, you know, we're very accepting of people and uh, no matter who you are, how weird you think you are, you can fit in with us, you know? I, as a longtime weirdo and nerd, <laughs> I, I am thankful for that. So thank you all for tuning in to this little uh, lesson uh, trip down Anne's memory lane. If you wondered how I got in, that is how I got in. That's how I... Uh, how we did all this stuff. Oh, I mentioned something earlier and I totally got uh, distracted, but uh, I did actually go back and win two Golden Demons the year after. The year after uh, when I was living in Madison for the summer, I'd moved back in to hang out with my college friends. Um, shout out to Greg and the gang, Shoshi and Pat and all them. And uh, I went back to Baltimore just to compete in Golden Demons and uh, I won. A demon so yay I did actually meet that goal and that meeting that goal was important um, because it taught me that I could I could do things when I set my mind to them right like up to that point I think my follow-through definitely lacked in life but it taught me that when I really cared I could make it work and so yeah it was a very important very important time in my life I'd say Thanks much for tuning in. Uh, again, my, my Patreon is patreon.com slash painting big. I, of course, do Twitch streams for Reaper on Reaper Miniatures Twitch uh, every weekday morning. And I do my own stream on Saturdays on twitch.tv slash painting big. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at painting big, all one word. I hope you have enjoyed this little retrospective. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all up for the next Fundamentals of Miniature Painting video. Thanks so much. This is Anne signing off.